Hello, and welcome to weight loss surgery, what it is and how it can improve your overall health. In this informational video, we will cover many topics pertaining to surgical weight loss, including information about obesity itself and its causes and effects, as well as the varying types of surgeries available, the benefits of each, and what patients can expect before, during, and after a procedure. First, let's talk about obesity. Obesity is a total body disease in which a person has an unhealthy amount of body fat that can lead to other chronic diseases. Patients who suffer from obesity are at greater risk for many diseases, including diabetes, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, stroke, and many types of cancer, as well as having an elevated risk of death from any of these conditions. Obesity is determined using a measure known as body mass index, or BMI, which compares a person's weight and height to determine a percentage of total body fat. Those with a BMI of 30 or over are considered obese. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as of 2020, 32% of all adults in the US struggle with obesity. Let's look at what can cause obesity. The most common cause is called energy imbalance, or more simply known as consuming more calories than you burn, which causes your body to convert the extra calories into fat and store it for later use. This imbalance is caused by more than just how much you eat, but also by how much you consume in one day, your level of physical activity, how much sleep you get, and the types of food you eat, such as ones high in added sugar or saturated fats. Diet and exercise are important factors in determining weight. However, we know now there are other factors that can lead to obesity, such as stress, certain medicines, genetic makeup, hormones, and even your environment, including where you live and work. Now let's talk about the effect obesity can have on your health. Obesity is a head-to-toe disease, affecting every part of your body and contributes to health issues such as depression, sleep apnea, asthma, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and many more. Fortunately, obesity is treatable in many ways. Common treatments include losing weight through healthy eating, being more physically active, and forming other positive life habits. Weight management programs may help some people lose weight or keep them from regaining lost weight. Some people who suffer from obesity are for whatever reason, unable to lose enough weight to improve their health or are unable to keep from regaining weight. When this occurs, other treatments, including weight loss medicines, weight loss devices, or bariatric surgery are options. Any of these approaches would be appropriate, but let's focus on one for the rest of this video, bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery is no longer just about weight loss. Bariatric surgery is considered a treatment for metabolic disease and many associated comorbid conditions. To be a candidate for any bariatric surgery, the patient must be at least 100 pounds overweight, with a BMI of 35 to 39, along with one comorbid condition, such as hypertension, type 2 diabetes, or sleep apnea. A BMI of 40 or above is a qualification on its own. For those who meet these standards, there are several surgical options available. All procedures are performed as minimally invasive or laparoscopically. Note that not all surgeons perform all procedures. The most popular option in weight loss surgery is the gastric sleeve surgery. You may have heard it referred to as laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, or LSG. In this procedure, a fairly large portion of the stomach is removed, with only a sleeve-shaped portion remaining that is about the size of a banana and requires no reconnection of the intestine. Patients can expect losing up to 60% of excess weight with this procedure. Next, let's look at what is called gastric bypass or RUNY. In this procedure, the stomach is divided into two portions. The top portion, which is about the size of an egg, will become your new stomach. The lower portion is bypassed and no longer used to digest food. The small intestine is then divided and connected to the newly created top portion, bypassing part of the digestion tract, which results in decreased absorption of calories, vitamins, and minerals, which leads to weight loss. Patients undergoing this procedure can expect to lose as much as 70% of their excess weight. Another option is called a duodenal switch. 
This procedure combines a gastrectomy, the removal of part of the stomach, with an intestinal bypass, which makes the path your food takes through your intestines shorter. This reduces the size of the stomach, as well as how much nutrition your small intestine can absorb from your food. There is a new procedure available, the Single Anastomosis Duodenoelio Bypass, or SADIS, also referred to as SIPS or LOOPDS. This procedure is highly effective for type 2 diabetes treatment. Since it is new, it is not performed by all surgeons. With these duodenal switch procedures, patients typically experience an 80% reduction in their excess weight. Additionally, the gastric band procedure is an option. This procedure divides the stomach into two parts by placing an adjustable silicone band around the top portion of the stomach that can be filled with fluid to limit food restriction. Food sits on the top portion, taking longer to digest. Patients undergoing this procedure can expect to lose up to 50% of their excess weight. There are many factors to consider when thinking about which procedure is right for you, including the amount of weight loss desired, current medical history, risk for post-operative complications, eating habits, lifestyle, the ability to reverse or revise the procedure post-operatively, as well as your ability to follow up with your doctor after the procedure. Make sure you discuss these and other factors with your doctor. Patients can expect to spend at least one to two days in the hospital for a minimally invasive procedure, and a few additional days are expected for more invasive surgeries. Some procedures can be done on an outpatient basis or as a same-day surgery. In the first weeks post-surgery, patients normally feel weak and experience other normal post-operative symptoms, such as pain, nausea, vomiting, lightheadedness, loss of appetite, loose stools, gas, and mood swings. It is very important for the patient to be active right away after the procedure. Short walks or shifting positions in bed while you're in the hospital can effectively promote circulation, promoting healing and reducing blood clots. Upon leaving the hospital, the patient will be provided with specific dietary and activity instructions, as well as information about follow-up appointments. Once home, strenuous activity and lifting anything heavier than 20 pounds is not recommended for up to six weeks. However, non-strenuous activities, such as short walks, are encouraged and important for a healthy recovery. Staying hydrated is also key. Drinking one and a half to two liters of water a day by small frequent sips is recommended. Wound care is very important once the patient is home. The surgical site will have incision sutures or stitches deep in the skin and surgical glue or steri strips on top. The sutures dissolve over time, and the glue begins to peel one to two weeks after surgery. Steri strips will come off on their own in about seven days. It's safe to let the incisions get wet during a shower, but don't submerge them in water until they're completely healed. A small amount of yellow, pink, or clear fluid draining from the incision is normal. If an infection develops at the wound site, it usually occurs three to 10 days after surgery. Watch for symptoms of infection, which include increased redness or foul-smelling fluid coming from the incision, severe pain at the incision site. Other symptoms of concern are fever, chest pain, shortness of breath, nausea and vomiting, pain and swelling in the legs, trouble urinating, and pain that persists after taking pain medication. If you experience any of these symptoms or others, contact your care team. Since absorption of vitamins and minerals is altered after bariatric surgery, whether it be from malabsorption or restriction, decreased vitamin mineral absorption may occur and could lead to serious and sometimes lifelong consequences. It is imperative to take daily bariatric-specific multivitamins and mineral replacements as prescribed by your surgeon, as well as commit to lifelong follow-ups with your doctor. Patients may experience temporary hair loss after the surgery. This is one of the body's natural responses to the stress of rapid weight loss and should improve after six to 12 months. To minimize any loss of hair, the patient should take their daily multivitamin and consume at least 60 to 80 grams of protein per day, as well as avoid any hair treatments such as perms or coloring that can stress the hair. Typically, patients return to their jobs within two weeks, depending on what type of work they do. Patients can typically resume sexual activity once they feel physically and emotionally stable. However, it is imperative to avoid pregnancy during the first 12 to 18 months after surgery. Body weight and micronutrient levels rapidly change during this post-operative period, which is not optimal for supporting a healthy pregnancy. 
If you do become pregnant, please contact the Bariatric Surgery Office and your care team will work with your obstetrician to ensure the best possible prenatal care. We offer comprehensive services like dietary and mental health education and support before and after surgery. Bariatric surgery is a tool. Using that tool is up to you. Lifelong follow-ups with your surgeon, attending support groups, and staying connected to our care team is essential to your success. So where do you go from here? Some key next steps include insurance verification and a consultation. We recommend that you call your insurance company to verify you have coverage for surgery and obtain the specific requirements to qualify. Typically, insurance will require various qualifications, such as BMI, psychological evaluation, a letter of support, nutritional evaluation, and sometimes medical weight management prior to surgery. The surgeon's office or facility will also verify your insurance requirements, as well as navigate you through this preoperative process. If you do not have coverage, there are cash pay options available. The time it takes to complete the preoperative program typically takes one to three months, depending on your insurance company's requirements. If you are interested in moving forward, please contact the facility or a surgeon of your choice to schedule a consultation.